Dave. Well, every month, Nisei Restaurant in San Francisco has what they call a third culture collaboration dinner. And what it does is showcase the culinary world as a whole. So here to explain a little bit more is chef and owner of Nisei, David Yoshimura. Thank you so much for being here and congratulations on now your second year of being here in San Francisco, opening uh, your own location here. I'm sure that's a really big deal, but I'm really excited to see what you have in store for us here today. So tell me a little bit before we get to these dishes, what is that event all about? So the third culture collaboration event is highlighting Asian and Asian American chefs. Uh, it all started by um, my restaurant, Nisei, which means second generation Japanese. Uh, and I'm half Japanese, so I really wanted to uh, showcase the talent of other Asian American chefs just like me. In my opinion, I think um, there's a lot, I wanted to put emphasis on how great American chefs are. I think a lot of times on the fine dining world, we look for tradition in Asia or Japan, for my, in my example. Um, but I think that restaurants like mine can stand up just as high as the other restaurants across the world. So I wanted to uh, do this collaboration to bring in chefs just like me and um, kind of cook a dinner with them and show them that, yes, we are on the same stage as everyone else. I know in recent years the term fusion has come under fire, but if you can explain a little bit more about what your cuisine is about at Nisei. Yeah, so my cuisine is um, its a per personal reflection of myself, so I'm half Japanese, um, and really the, the cuisine is um, about my own personal journey. I've worked in fine dining my whole life, so the food is rather refined, and I use um, locally sourced ingredients from all over California. So I'm trying to use the best ingredients I have and also stay true to my own culture, which is being half Japanese. And if you want to, you know, call that fusion, that's fine. But really for me, it's just being transparent with who I am. You know? And honoring where you came from. Exactly. Uh, speaking of where you came from, I know that you moved here from Texas. So you did mention being able to work with our locally grown food. So what mm -hmm. kind of a blessing would you say in being a chef here in California and then working with the ingredients that are grown out here? Well, in my opinion, I think the Bay Area has the best produce probably in America. It's, we have the best farmers markets. We have very, very good seasons. And so for me, it's like, it is really a blessing. It's like, we're, we're almost too spoiled, you know? <laughs> really in Japanese cuisine, we always follow the seasons. If you go to a nice kaiseki restaurant or my restaurant, for example, you can always see seasonal dishes. And I think because we have the best of the best, you can always get a taste of what that is. And so that was my next question. Um, is your menu seasonal? You just answered that. And so what can we look forward to as we are approaching fall and finishing off summer here? Yeah, so fall is a great time for Japanese cuisine. Um, you see things like a second season of katsuo, which is right here. And uh, usually I like to highlight um, some fall ingredients like sweet potatoes. I always have persimmons on the, in the restaurant, at my restaurant during the fall. I always hang hoshigaki persimmons um, in the window and I let them dry. Um, so that's always something fun to look forward to. Very cool. I do love persimmon, so I'm pretty biased there. But if you can um, tell us a little bit more about what we got here. Yeah, absolutely. So this is just, uh, it's actually pretty perfect. Uh, we're doing a two-year anniversary dinner uh, this weekend at Nisei. And uh, these are kind of a selection of things we've made over the years, so it's perfect timing. So mm -hmm. we always have a suke mono at the restaurant, which is traditionally made Japanese pickles. Um, the bottom one here is umeboshi or pickled plum. You have miso pickled garlic and then sake leaves pickled melon. Um, over here you have seared scallop with a pine nut miso, pine nut granola, watercress, and oil. And then um, this one here is a little bit more on the traditional side. It's a smoked and grilled uh, katsuo or bonito. Uh, on the bottom you have a grated daikon with ponzu, mioga, and then scallion. Um, so you can kind of see that some things are traditional at Nisei, some things are not so traditional. We kind of like ride this line of respecting tradition, but also pushing the boundary a little bit. Very cool. Yeah, this one here is um, braised abalone from uh, Monterey, Monterey Bay abalone. Uh, on the bottom, Whoop. Oh, careful there, <laughs> you have a cherry tomato. It's slippery. Yeah, yeah. Finger lime cells on top and then a chai flower. Because it's fresh, it's from Monterey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, um, over here in dessert, uh, something a little bit more modern is uh, this is a Okinawan sweet potato ice cream, 
with a fudge made from the same potato and a praline on the bottom. On top, you have sweet potato mochi, as well as uh, chips, and then a black sesame crumble. So it kind of represents like a fall scene of, you know, leaves, a little bit of like soil, things like that. So, so which part is the ice cream? It's really... It's on the bottom. You okay. can't really see. It's all hidden. You have to... It's really fun. Yeah. Oh, underneath this. Yeah. Underneath. This is cool. That's quite the experience. Yeah, thanks. And then finally, um, at the restaurant, we like to highlight uh, something called wagashi. So wagashi mm -hmm. is a Japanese confections. They take a very long time to make because it's all made by hand. We shape them all, and we like to have fun with it. And they're the same kind of thing. It's like a good indication of the seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so these are all made from white bean and miso. You have nerikiri here, which is a kind of a mochi. Nerikiri with matcha inside. This is what's called chichi dango, which is um, a little bit of fruit juice mochi. And then this is uh, something kind of fun. It's a, a black sesame mochi with a red bean inside, and we shape it in the shape of pebbles. <laughs> you know? That's cool. I really, yeah. want, I really <laughs> want people to see this at home. I mean, look at the craftsmanship here. I can't believe this is dessert. It straight up looks like pebbles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so these are just like, you know, kind of uh, examples of what you can find at Nisei. That's very exciting. And so before you go, if you can tell people a little bit more about what they can expect if they come out to Nisei. Sure, absolutely. So Nisei, like I said, it's fine dining Japanese American cuisine. Uh, we always try to do some things traditional and we also like to kind of push the envelope a little bit. But I think something fun that we do at Nisei is uh, we always have events going on. So the third culture collaboration we do once a month. We're always doing other events with uh, sake dinners, wine dinners, things like that. I'm always pairing up with chefs from Japan or also from San Francisco. But most importantly at Nisei, what I think um, I would like people to take away from this is you're not going to find Japanese food that that you would at other restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's plenty of sushi restaurants and kaiseki restaurants in the city, which I love in particular, but for my restaurant, what sets my restaurant apart is, um, you know, it's really pushing the envelope of what Japanese and Japanese American food can be. And that makes the experience all the more new for people who maybe want to do something a little bit different but still have that same flavor palette. Um, and before you go again, I do want to hear a little bit more about that event. So what sort of restaurants are you collaborating with? And is it all types of cultures from Asia? I know that mm -hmm. you are um, heavily involved with your own Japanese culture. But who's being involved and invited to participate this time? And when does that take place? So in the past, we've worked with other uh, fine dining Michelin star chefs. Like we, uh, I had a collaboration with James uh, Scheibau from Comey. He's a two Michelin star chef in Oakland. Um, and he is also, um, he's first generation Asian American. Um, but we've also had chefs from Japan. We just recently had a three Michelin star chef from Ryugan. It's, um, he's based in Taipei. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, mostly it's Asian American chefs. But I think going into next year, we're going to be opening it up to all chefs around the world. And so does it all take place at your location? All, everyone take, every, all of them take place in my location. OK, cool. And so when can people come out and taste that? Is that happening now? Um, right now, we're doing a two-year anniversary dinner. Mm -hmm. But it, it, they do happen once a month. And you just have to kind of keep an eye out on our reservation system or our Instagram. OK, so keep an eye out. You heard it here. Thank you so much to David Yoshimura for joining us here from Nisei Restaurant in San Francisco. We'll be right back.